boot up almost any Super Mario game, and within, I don't know, maybe two minutes of playing, you will encounter a power-up. So clearly, it's an important thing in the games, and some titles don't even function anymore without them. However, they aren't always that well designed or even fun to mess around with, which can be a real shame to be honest. So what we're going to do today is find out which ones that we've seen in the series are the absolute worst. Number 5. Now, personally, when it comes to the new Super Mario Bros. games, I'm not that excited about them because they usually don't do a whole lot of new things. Just take a lot of mechanics from the previous game, repackage it a bit with a handful of new things, and sell it at full price. However, when it comes to these games, I have to say that the very first title did a lot of things right, especially with the cool new bosses. But there was one power-up in those games that I don't like as much. It's not bad from a game design standpoint, but it's just annoying to work with. I'm talking about the mini mushroom. When grabbing one, you will shrink, and it allows you to enter mini war pipes. And you even gain the ability to perform flutter jumps and run across water all due to your light weight. This plays quite a big role in the title, and it certainly gives you some unique powers in the game, which allows for some interesting level design. So that's all great, right? Yet again, another hit from Nintendo. Well, there are also a number of problems with this power-up. First of all, it makes your character super floaty, which makes it really hard to control at times, and so it all feels a bit weird and clumsy, which can certainly mess up your chances of beating a level. But there's even more to it all, because when you're hit once, you will lose a life, and ground pounds are required to damage enemies and bosses. So, aside from the weird jumping physics, if you mess up once, you're most likely meeting your end thanks to the fact that you're so freaking weak. All of this makes it a bit annoying to work with, especially since the Mega Mushroom turns you into an undefeatable tank. And yes, I know that was Nintendo's goal, but I do like one extreme more than the other. And so I think it's not that good, really. Although it does function fine from a game design standpoint, it's just not good enough in my eyes. Number 4 now, like I said, New Super Mario Bros. can be disappointing, with a little spark of hope at the end of the tunnel in the form of a new cool concept. Although that isn't necessarily a given. Now, one of those was the Propeller Mushroom, which works extremely well and is fun to use in the game even. But Nintendo also made some other versions of this power-up that just seem useless to me in a lot of ways. Like the Propeller Box, which can be used to rapidly fly into the air to great heights and then slowly fall back down towards the ground. And it's lost once the player is hit by an enemy or finishes a level. So you can't use it for a very long time. But that's not all, because there are some also another one called the Propeller Block, which is the same in a lot of ways, literally almost all of them, with the exception that players can maintain the ability to use the Propeller Jump even after being hit, as long as they are holding the block, and also that they cannot take it into pipes. So, for some reason, Nintendo was remaking the same power-up over and over and over again, with an uglier design even. As you can imagine, all of this isn't very useful or new in any way for the players who encounter them, making this box and block completely useless. Just use the mushroom version! You made it for a reason! Now, if they offered something truly new, then I could possibly understand why they would ever put them in the game. But there isn't anything really special about them at all. That's why I think these are some of the worst seen in the entire series, even though the Propeller Mushroom is a great power-up that isn't useless. I guess Nintendo was either running out of ideas or just being lazy. Regardless of that, I'm certainly disappointed. Number 3. Now, sometimes a power-up can be more than just an extra ability or even some sort of super trick that you can do all of a sudden. Because we have seen some really weird things that are labeled as power-ups that don't necessarily fit in a category. Like this, a Goomba Mask, which is an item that appears in Super Mario 3D World and can be found after defeating certain Goombas or on the right statue near a set of charging chucks in World 5-1. And as you can already imagine, you just have it on your head and it looks ridiculously silly all of a sudden. This would have been great in like a Halloween level. I don't know, the pumpkin zone from Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins, for example. But instead, we see them on the beach and some other places, which isn't as fitting, in my opinion. A horror or Halloween theme would have been so much more fitting. However, that's classic Nintendo for you. So, let's continue. 
Upon wearing it, Goombas, Kalumbas, and Mini Goombas do not recognize you and will not attack. And Spotlights will also leave you alone. Which is great! It's like an amazing disguise that no one would ever recognize. And so you can get away while they're standing all around you. But other enemies like Koopa Troopas and Charging Chucks will still actively chase you, so it's not perfect. And if you get hit, you straight up lose it. However, while it looks fun and can be useful at times, almost always it's kind of useless and therefore we rarely see it at all. Only in a handful of moments you will see these and I totally get why. It's a bit of a gimmick, but nothing more. They could have done something else with them, but in the end it's just a mediocre disguise mask that looks odd. Sometimes in a funny way. But aside from all of that, I think this thing is certainly disappointing and barely adds anything to the actual gameplay or fun factor. Which sadly enough means that it belongs on this list together with simple copies like the propeller boxes and blocks. Number 2 now most of the power-ups we get to see in the end are introduced in 2D Super Mario games like the early games from the 80s and 90s or the new Super Mario Bros series. But we also saw a new one that's a bit funny, however also very, very, very useless with it adding almost nothing. I'm of course talking about the Mystery Mushroom from Super Mario Maker, a power-up that only appears in his title. It resembles the sprite of a Super Mushroom from Super Mario Bros, but this time with a question mark on its cap. And when you touch one of these, you transform into one of the various costumes, many of which are based on non-Mario Nintendo characters. These can be unlocked by completing the 100 Mario Challenge mode on a certain difficulty, or by scanning any compatible amiibo, while some are unlocked by completing an event course. So while you can get some absolutely stunning different characters from this, like Samus or Tingle, there is something missing. Now, you look like the specific character, so that's good. However, they don't always have interesting custom animations or even sound effects. And aside from all of that, tons of them are behind some sort of imaginary paywall in the form of a plastic plastic figurine that's slightly overpriced to be honest. Which certainly takes the magic away from me. It's not an actual power up in the game, but some sort of semi DLC feature. So really, this is just not good enough for me. When I see a new power up in a game, I want it to play a role in the level design or gameplay. But here, all you get is a simple look. So this is not gonna cut it for me. I know a lot of people love them, but it's just not my thing. But I do get the appeal to an extent. Some do look good in a way, like the Yoshis and a bunch of others, but it's just not good enough. Number 1 now, back in the day, games like Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario World worked quite differently from a lot of current games. One quite big difference is time itself. In Super Mario Galaxy, you can take ages upon ages to complete a certain mission or thing. But if you look at titles from the 80s and 90s, then you only have a very limited amount of time, and you can run out of it even. And so Nintendo wanted to make a power-up based around this. However, it's not that useful, I would say. It's called the Plus Clock, and collecting this precious timepiece gives the player more seconds on the clock to complete a task. This could totally help some players who just aren't too fast when clearing levels, although those people are quite rare. So, sadly enough, in almost every game you see them in, they don't really help you a whole lot, since most of the time you will easily make it. And with the fact that it doesn't add a whole lot to the gameplay itself, this entire so-called power-up isn't too useful. But I will say that in Super Mario Galaxy 2, it's used in a better way, and that it actually makes sense. In this game, they appear in several speedy combat missions and add 10 seconds to your time limit, which starts at either 20 or 30. And yes, you really must collect these in order to complete the level. It's like a race going from clock to clock, which is actually quite cool and works extremely well, showing all of us the potential this power-up has, which we sadly enough almost never ever see. We've only seen it used like this in a handful of times. More often, Nintendo doesn't do this with them. So sadly enough, thanks to this reason, it's certainly the worst in my opinion, and ended up being horribly outdated in time. However, do you want to know what did age well? Are other videos that you can find in the upper right corner, and there is even a playlist with more videos like this, because this video is about done. While I criticize them a lot, they all have a place in the world of the Mushroom Kingdom. However, some are certainly better than others. 